Zara keeps cranking them out. We've got a new collection for men called Vibe Variations. Has anybody got their nose on them? Do let me know, put a comment down below. If you've sampled these fragrances, I'd like to find out. When I looked for these fragrances, they were nowhere to be found at Zara stores here in San Francisco. So I had to order these. So I ordered five new fragrances from Zara for men called Vibe Variations, and that's the collection name. And then also I ordered the new version of Leather Jardin. They've changed the fragrance into a new bottle or put it into a, a new bottle. Still Joe Malone, but they've changed the size. The original I have here, which is my favorite Zara fragrance of all time, comes in a 90 ml. I can't remember how much I bought it for, but now 100 ml comes in uh, the bottle, in the new bottle, and it's uh, 39.90. So find out about all of these Zara fragrances coming up. Thanks so much for tuning in. We're talking about Zara's Vibe Variations collection of fragrances targeted to men. But when I was putting down the notes, they seemed like they were fairly unisex offerings. So I don't understand why Zara keeps separating them. I think it's because maybe we have the men's floor or men's section of the store, which is containing the men's fragrances. And then we've got a feminine or women's section of the store. And then they're putting in the fragrances there to be, uh, you know, for women. Have they launched? I think they've launched unisex fragrances, haven't they? I can't quite remember. Put a comment down below if you know for sure. But these five fragrances are $29.90 or $27.90 each. They come in 100 ml and they're Eau de Parfum concentration. No perfumers were named. So I feel like if they name the perfumers, the fragrances are a little more expensive. And if they don't, they're on the less expensive side because our fragrances have gone up to almost $50 a, a bottle, but these seem to be uh, fairly inexpensive. And I've got four of the five Vibe, Vape, Vibe Variations fragrances here, and then also the Leather Jardin is here. And then the one of the Vibe Variation fragrances is here. I haven't opened them up, so this is gonna be completely blind buy. As I said, I went to go sample these at our Zara stores and there were none to be found, so I ordered them to be delivered here. If you've gotten your nose on these, let me know, put a comment down below. We're gonna do this in alphabetical order. Let's go ahead and tear into this box. Here we have one, Met Amber. But the cool thing is they, they list the Euro price on the back, $15.95. So $27.90 here in the States, $15.95 in Euros over in uh, any you know any European countries that utilizes the Euro currency. Uh, Shea Manila. What do you guys think of these names? Are they running out of names? Because they've used quite a bit of names. They, they crank them out. Leather Fever. Again, $15.95. And the fact that these have the $15.95 price on them uh, makes me think that they're not really selling them in store. Otherwise, they would have the dollar price on them. And here is Flower Please. Uh, let me open up the Leather Jardin. So the Leather Jardin, what the heck? Leather Jardin is here. Once again, it's $22.95. It's, it's less expensive than uh, the fragrances here because here it's $39.90. Let me open up the other box. Yeah, I don't know why they separated this. Maybe they didn't. I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. Sometimes Zara does some strange things. Um, the problem with Zara fragrances is it's completely unreliable. That's why I, I've been shy about doing videos on this house because they, they discontinue fragrances so much. Uh, I keep wanting to do them to see if we're going to find the best fragrance. And this is Vetiver Rich. So... What we'll do is do this in alphabetical order. So flower, please. Then it's leather fever. Then it would be met amber. Then Shea Manila. And then finally vetiver rich. And then of course I will do a comparison of leather jardin and then the new versus the old. So I don't understand why they changed the the size, 90 ml to 100 ml. Maybe because of the bottle. But I believe I paid. $39.90 for the 90 ml leather jardin. Have you guys compared? Let me know. But let's go ahead and open this box up. So the cool thing is now they have this uh, 
thing that you can do that with and open it up. And the other thing I want to say is a lot of folks are saying you have to let these macerate. Why? What is this whole thing about macerating these fragrances? Like, isn't an average person that just buys one fragrance uh, a year wanting to wear these fragrances right away? These are not made for fragrance aficionados. They're made for the average person that only has probably one or two bottles of fragrance. So let's say, for example, that person doesn't know anything about maceration and maturation. They buy this fragrance and it doesn't last. What are they going to say? These fragrances do not last because they're not probably following channels like this to discuss these kind of situations. But either way, pretty interesting looking bottles. They kind of remind me of a uh, Byredo a little bit. The sticker's not on 100%. And I don't get the parentheses, but I guess this is just the theme they're going with. But uh, let me show you this also. The weird thing is I took down the information yeah, I think it matches, but the, what they're doing here on the cover of the box, they're highlighting three standout notes, but off their website, they list a bunch more. So yeah, very simplistic. As you can see, I think these prices are really good. $27.90 for fragrances, I think it's really great. And the bottle, again, the cap's pretty cheap, but I think I like these bottles actually. They do remind me of Byredo, but you know, they're not Byredo, obviously, because Byredo sells for what, $320 for 100 ml? This is $27.95. And the sprayer is actually good. I'm quite impressed with the quality of the sprayer here. I usually don't like Byredo sprayers. So Flower Please is Eau de Parfum, 100 ml, $27.90, no perfumer. The notes are white linen, aldehydes, jasmine petals, white musk, salted amber. So this fragrance right away with the notes, it seems like it's a unisex, if not feminine, leaning. It's very musky, it's fresh, it's floral and aldehydic. For sure, it's powdery. It has some soapy touches. Remember, Frederick Mall's Acne Studios, it's 100 ml for over $400. I'm not saying this smells like it, but this will do. This will do. Flower, please. I think if you want an alternative that doesn't smell like it, but acts like it, perhaps, Flower, please by Zara will satisfy because it's aldehydes. It's very, very clean and soapy. Although the, the Acne Studios is a lot soapier and probably a lot more robust but this i think this is great i think this is clean to the max perfect summer wear i think if you are looking for a new fragrance and you like the aldehydic soapiness muskiness the freshness i think flower please will satisfy so let's move on to leather fever next here we go these boxes are pretty cheap honestly but you are getting what you pay for 27.90 is really inexpensive i'm actually quite happy with flower please go figure it also, I've mentioned in past videos how the fragrances seem a bit subdued. Um, that's pretty robust. Flower Please is pretty uh, robust. So the similar thing here with uh, the box. We've already showed you the box, but this time we've got Leather Fever here like this. Again, this does remind me of Byredo. It's not really Byredo, but it reminds me of it. But this fragrance features notes of citruses, violet petal, or I should say leaves. I don't know if it's the petal they're using or the leaves, but the, the, the Zara website does say petal. There's pear, cedar, spices, vetiver, and musk. They didn't really come out and say they're spices. It says, it says the spiciness of the woods in the heart of the cedar. Anyway, uh, so we'll see how leather uh, fever is. The notes doesn't list leather, but obviously we've got a leather, it's called leather fever. So it's gonna be a leathery fragrance. And the first fragrance I've already spoke about, I think it's very unisex. It's targeted to men, but a woman can totally pull that off. Totally. Well, I'm smelling like something. I haven't even put my nose on it. I, I, I'm actually kind of impressed with the quality of these fragrances so far. The fact that I can smell it off the strip and I haven't put my nose close to it uh, means these are pretty robust fragrances. Uh, quite happy with this actually so far. So let's smell. 
There is definitely a fruitiness here and also a bit candied, but not a sweet candy, more like a candied consistency. Uh, I'm getting like a slight violet candy effect, but very ozonic. And they mentioned violet petal, but I'm getting an ozonic touch from the leaves. It's watery. It's just like a drippy lozenge, like a candy, hard candy, violet candy, green, fresh, fruity, musky, ozonic. I think this is great too. Wow. So far, this is, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just giving you my thoughts on smells. I don't know how these are going to wear, but both of the fragrances I think will be perfect for summer. If you're looking for something inexpensive to take with you to on a trip, maybe, uh, and just, you know, wear it away. And then maybe uh, you bring back a ton of stuff. It's only $27. Uh, you can leave it behind. I'm not saying you're going to do that, but it's that kind of a fragrance. It's quality enough that it's worth the price and more. But uh, if you bring a ton of stuff back with you and there's no room in the suitcase, it's it's like that kind of an inexpensive fragrance. But yeah, Leather Fever. I don't get much leather from it. I don't get that part about it. And it's called Leather Fever, but they didn't list leather from the notes. Maybe it dries down to a leather, but it's sandalwood and moss and vetiver and musk in the dry down. So we'll see if it goes leathery, but it's up very fresh and ozonic up top and fruity and a bit candied. I, I like that one. I, I'm, I'm surprised how good it is. All right, next one we're talking about is Metamber, this one right here. So let's go ahead and check how this one is. So Metamber, once again, it's Eau de Parfum 2795 uh, and 100 ml. And it features notes of black pepper, white amber, moss, dry woods, crystalline musk. And again, both of the two fragrances I've already tested sprayed really great as well. And I usually don't like Byredo sprayers. I'm, what am I saying, Byredo? I usually don't like Zara sprayers. So this is a quite satisfactory collection of fragrances so far. Met Amber. This one is kind of subdued. I'm not smelling it off the strip, strip, whereas the previous two I did. No. Whoa, this is very, very light. Is this one of the fragrances that has to macerate and maturate still? This is really, really light. I'm not smelling anything. I mean, I'm getting a spicy, ambery touch. Whoa, I'm getting some Ambroxan. I think the white amber is what's being referred to as Ambroxan. This is so strong probably that it's a bit nose blinding or gives you a bit of an anosmia, but it's developing into very Ambroxan-like touches. Kind of Baccarat Rouge-like vibes, but not the actual smell, the ingredients from that fragrance or the notes from that fragrance. But the spices are kind of trying to develop. I, I think this one's good too. It's just super um, subdued. So I think this one's going to be better on skin. Let's spray. Yeah, this is basically Ambrox and Balm, which is not projecting too much. It's a bit subdued and it's a bit calm, but on skin, on your body heat, it's going to amplify and intensify and project. And I know some of you don't like Ambroxan and fragrances. I was one of them. I've gotten really used to it and really enjoy it. I think this will be perfect, more minimalistic, molecular kind of fragrance to wear for those of you that like these kind of fragrances. One spritz, two spritz. It'll go with you all day kind of a thing. I'm not 100% sure that's going to be correct with this, but usually those kind of notes do linger. And, uh, you know, every time you sweat a little bit or your body temp rises or heats up, uh, I think they'll still project off of you and nicely mixed with your own chemistry. It does seem very subdued, though. Better off of skin, not so good off the strip. I like it, and I like these kind of fragrances. You can actually use that also as a base to enhance some of the other notes, I mean, the other fragrances to make them stronger. So you can spritz down the Met Amber, 
and maybe spritz on top the flower please or the leather fever it'll intensify it make the fragrance last longer use it as a base note because most of the notes in this fragrance metamber are uh, base notes it's the amber the the uh, ambroxan like uh, ingredient that's in here so you can use that as a base note and uh, you know use it to layer other fragrances with so i'm happy with it it's not as loud as the others but so far i'm quite impressed with this collection i, I don't know how they did a, such a great job with this so far uh, those of you that are on a budget for 27.90 you can get all these fragrances and uh, probably around $175, $180 with the tax. You have a whole collection and a variety of fragrances. Okay, the next fragrance I'm going to talk to you about, the fourth fragrance in this Vibe Variations collection is Shea Manila. This is the one name I don't care for. I don't know why they call it this, Shea Manila. Manila is a city in the Philippines, but uh, I don't get the name. Shamans. So similar bottle, as you can see, very Byredo-esque. This one features notes of coconut, bergamot, cardamom, peach blossom, sandalwood, carrots, vanilla cream, pink cotton candy, and amorous. Is this one going to be very sweet? It sounds like it's going to be sweet. We shall see. Again, sprays are great on this collection. I'm quite happy with the sprays. Ooh. Now this smells like a unisex if not feminine leaning fragrance there's this faint reminder of something i've smelled before and this one actually i can smell that it's not like utilizing the most expensive ingredients i kind of like it i don't love this one i like the first two a lot more but this will satisfy anybody out there, anybody that's into sweet fragrances, women and men. The vanilla is quite strong in this. It's very vanillic and it's also sweet and powdery. Maybe sticky, maybe a bit candied, a bit caramel-like. But there's, there's a soapy quality in here, which is, I think, contributed by the cardamom that's in here. The cardamom is really stand out. I'm going to spray this one on skin as well. It's not as loud as the first two again, but louder than Met Amber. The Met Amber was very subdued. Yeah, I can smell it on skin, but it's definitely musky and powdery and ambery. Let's see how this one does. This Shea Manila actually smells much better on skin than the, the strip. But it's more of a dry vanilla rather than a sticky, syrupy, sweet, honeyed vanilla, if that makes sense. The powder thoughts and ideas are quite there. There's definitely a very qual uh, powdery quality about it. I mean, I love it. I, I've got way too many vanilla fragrances, so I might not go for this one. But I think this will satisfy. There's a little bit of a makeup effect here also. The fact that it has the powdery touches. So there's a little bit of a makeup-y smell in here. Yeah, Shea Manila. Again, very, 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 very surprised at how good the quality of this uh, collection is so far. The first two are my favorites. The next two are okay. I, they're definitely wearable and it'll satisfy certain people. I like the way the first two are, the way they, they projected and how loud they were. The third one was very, very subdued. On skin, it's great. Again, if you're having issues with this collection of not performing on you, you can use Met Amber to you know, prolong the life of uh, any of the other fragrances. And the last fragrance is Vetiver Rich. Vetiver Rich. So let's see how this one is. This one seems like it's going to be the most masculine from the sound, although I thought Leather Fever would be masculine leaning, but Leather Fever, Flower Please are all very unisex. Met Amber, more you know, leaning masculine, but still uni all of these I think are very unisex, except I think uh, Shea Manila does lean a little on the feminine side. So next is, uh, is Vetiver Rich, which features notes of pear, saffron, bergamot, green violet, 
do they refer to violet leaves again? Jasmine petals, cedar wood, and vetiver. So let's see how this is. But before I do that, again, here's the bottle. Do you guys get Byredo vibes from the bottle design? Let me know. I'm curious who did these fragrances, who created them? Since they're not listing the uh, the um, perfumers, I'm, I'm quite curious. Ooh, this is a good one. Really, really good one. It's a very fresh take on vetiver. Wow. I wish I had some space to spritz. I'm gonna go ahead and do it on um, my arm here. This one's really good. I like the whole fruitiness of the pear with the, the kind of the woods and the earthiness of the vetiver. Ooh, that is nice. That is really, really good, guys. Vetiver rich, I think if you like, I mean, Remember, we have uh, the fragrance uh, Perseus from the House of Parfums of Marley. These don't smell alike, but the pear, the freshness, the juiciness, along with, I'm assuming it's the green violet, it's the violet leaves, because there's definitely a ozonic quality about this here, creates this juicy contrast against the aromatic earthiness of the vetiver in the woods. Wow, I like this one a lot. I think this is my favorite. Okay, I'm, I'm totally blown away by how good the quality of these fragrances are. I just want to find out who created these fragrances, which perfumers were behind them. I wish they publicized that information. But if I was to rank these fragrances, Vetiver Rich would be my number one favorite. Followed by Flower Please. Followed by Leather Fever. Followed by Shea Manila. Then finally, Met Amber. I think the Met Amber, as I was saying would be your base, your kind of uh, layering, uh, you know, fragrance, the enhancer, the, uh, you know, the tool that you would use to enhance, prolong, prime your fragrance and things like that. But on its own, it's very minimalistic and simplistic. It's more of a skin scent. And the rest you would add on top of it after you sprayed the uh, metamber to intensify. But for me, the, the vetiver rich is so good. So, so good, really, really great. And I've been bored of vetiver as I've been saying, but this vetiver really rocks. This is really, really great vetiver here. Those are my thoughts, guys. Let me know your thoughts on these fragrances. Have you sampled them? Do you like them? Do you hate them? Are you a fan of Zara? Do you hate Zara fragrances? What do you think? For me, if you find a Zara fragrance you like, they're so inexpensive, get a few more bottles as a backup because you never know if they're gonna linger around. For a while, the leather jardin was gone. At least in the States, it was gone. I know in Europe, it was still lingering on and they were they had it. But now they brought it back. Is it because it was very popular? I don't understand why they do these kind of things, but a lot of collections have been released from Zara and they've been discontinued. So if you find a fragrance you love and you enjoy, get a few backups because again, these are $27.90. If you buy all five, it's around $180 probably with tax, maybe $175. So it's not very expensive. It's less than, sometimes it's, it's less than buying a full niche fragrance. And these actually, I could say these are on the, I don't want to say niche quality, but yeah, I don't, I don't smell a lot of designer fragrances releasing a lot of fragrances like these, maybe one here and there, but really nicely done fragrances, I think. But yeah, if you like a fragrance from Zara, buy it, back it up because you never know if they're going to have it again the next time you go in. Anyway, those are my thoughts on these Vibe Variations fragrances. Let me know your thoughts. Put a comment down below. Don't forget to stick around to find out information on the new Leather Jardin after the outro. But if you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Really surprised about how great the Vibe Variations collection is. I'm, I'm blown away for the quality of these fragrances at $27.90 each, 100 ml. I think it should satisfy a lot of you. It's too bad they don't have them in the store for me to go check them out, but uh, I think they're definitely worth it for the price point at about $28 for 100 ml. But in this part of the video, I'm gonna talk to you about Leather Jardin, the new version and how it compares against the old version. 
So let me know if you already have a sample or got to sample Leather Jardin. For me, Leather Jardin is one of the best releases from, from uh, Zara. I feel like they did a great job with it. It was created by Joe Malone, who has been doing quite a bit of fragrances for Zara. Some of our fragrances are good. Some of them are kind of okay. I know a lot of you liked Ebony Wood. I believe that's what it's called. Is it Ebony Wood? I can't remember. Uh, I didn't care for that one that much. But for me, it was all about Leather Jardin. I absolutely loved it. It had vintage vibes and um, kind of lightly animalic, but inexpensive. Here's the original version of uh, Leather Jardin. I've used quite a bit of it. And I've got a few backup of this as well. Now we have this version. So it says Zara exclusive number four, and it's Leather Jardin created by Joe Malone. And the notes should be grapefruit, rose, and leather, 100 ml for $39.90. I wouldn't say go rush out and get this one because if you don't like vintage fragrances, classic fragrances, I don't think you're gonna like this one. If you're into what is released in the mass market these days, it's not going to satisfy. For me, I really loved it because it reminded me of the fragrances of the 70s leathery green fragrances like Devon, Magie Noir, and things like that. That's what I like about this one. Really, really obsessive uh, quality about it. But let's go ahead and spritz. Uh, yeah, I like, what do you think of this bottle? What, what do you guys think of this bottle compared to this one? Let me know. I don't know what, I don't know what to think. I kind of like these bottles. They're a bit more masculine. Not that there's anything against with a bottle having a feminine quality about it, but I kind of like these ones a little more than these. But this one almost looks like somebody dressed in a tuxedo for some strange reason. I get that uh, uh, quality from this uh, go figure, just the way the bottle looks to me. But let's go ahead and spritz this version. And then the older version. And then in fact, we're gonna experience the whole maceration maturation thing because my leather Jardin, the old one, I've had for about two years. Has it been two years? Three years? I can't remember exactly. Um, so I didn't smell anything when I sprayed the new one. But as soon as I sprayed the old one, whew, fills a room up. So it's created by Joe Malone. 100 ml for $39.90. Grapefruit, rose, and leather are the notes. The new one does seem to be lighter. As I said, I sprayed it. I didn't get any smell in the room, in the room or in front of me. Whereas when I spritzed the older one, it did, it did definitely fill this area, not the whole room, obviously. These are Zara fragrances, and off the strips, the the old one is much stronger. And I think this totally makes sense about the maturation and maceration thing. For me, this, this is one of the best fragrances at from any uh, from a lot of different brands. But I, I'm into classic fragrances. That's why I really like this uh, particular release. Some of you, as I said, might not like this one because it does hint at 70s uh, green fragrances. I don't know. There's no green no uh, notes mentioned, but I get these kind of green uh, qualities from it. Uh, just a green vibe about it. Uh, and uh, peppery, strong and spicy, leathery, and also floral with the rose. And it, it gives me cheaper vibes. Yeah, I think the, the the new version's going to have to ma macerate and maturate for sure. Because this, this version, uh, I wore it quite a bit when I first got it, as you can see. Uh, and I put it away because I have access to a lot of different fragrances. I'm always constantly looking up new fragrances and studying and, and, and seeing what they're all about. So I had to move on. Now that it's come out in this version, I'm going to have to let this do that whole maturation, maceration thing again. But you know, it smells it smells identical. It doesn't smell different. It just seems a bit wimpier compared to the other one, and it's obvious reasons for sure. Uh, that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, thank you so much for sticking around to find out about the Leather Jardin. It's a Zara exclusive number four Leather Jardin. Let me know, put a comment down below if you have checked out this particular release in the older version or in the newer version and what are your thoughts and if you've compared the two do you get any differences obviously i don't have any space left now to 
where both of them, but I will report back at a late on a later video to let you know what I think about both the new version of Leather Jardin and the older version of uh, Leather Jardin. Either way, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Stay tuned for another video soon. Have a good one. Bye-bye.